Hello and welcome to this tutorial to fix the Sling Studio Hub line in port uh, malfunctioning. Um, you can tell if your line in port is not working if you maybe jiggle the plug a little bit and maybe it's only coming out of one channel or maybe it's crackling or something like that. Um, before we begin, it's always a good idea to remember that tearing this apart will likely uh, void any warranty and things like that. So do it at your own risk. I'm by no means a professional, but I happen to do this on my own sling at home. Uh, it's also a good idea with working with circuitry to have um, some grounding so you don't have any electric discharge and things like that. So uh, to begin on the very bottom, make sure everything's unplugged. There's no power going to the sling at all. And go ahead and find some tweezers and uh, kind of dig down on these four pads underneath until you can kind of pry them up with your fingers like this. Once you have the four off there, you'll notice that these screws are T10 security screws, so they have a hole in the center of them. So go ahead and unscrew the four screws on the bottom of the Sling Studio as well. And you'll notice there's kind of a plastic uh, cap on top of that. And so go ahead and grab uh, any sort of plastic tool. Sometimes these come with iPhone repair kits. You can buy them online. Uh, but any sort of plastic just so you're not uh, digging in and damaging the plastic would work fine. And you're going to go ahead and insert into this into the crack there and then kind of pop out just trying to get those clips out. And you'll notice there's a clip right there in the center that's popped out and it comes right off. Next what we'll do is we want to get the white covers off. And so I began at the bottom of this video. It might actually be better to start at the top though. But what you'll do is you'll work um, this plastic tool in the crack between the black plastic and the white plastic, just gently working your way around in the sling studio. Again, these are plastic clips, and so they can break easy. So again, do it at your own risk, but you're just gently uh, moving this tool along the crease there, along the crack, and you're popping these little clips out as you go. Keep just working your way along here until you hear a satisfying just like that. And that comes right off. You'll do this on both sides and both plastic pieces are pretty much identical as far as I could tell. But you'll notice here there's little clips along the edges and each one of those you're having to pop out with that plastic piece. So this is just to show you a little bit of the inside of the circuitry and the different ports there. We have the power, the line in, mini HDMI, full HDMI. Now it's time to remove this bracket that holds the Wi-Fi antennas. So just grab any sort of pliers or tweezers and you're just gently pinching together these little uh, clear plastic pieces and then pry up to remove the Wi-Fi antenna brackets here. Once those are removed, I went ahead and removed the Wi-Fi antenna cables. They were black, red, blue, and yellow. And so just very gently kind of lift these off of their pads. You don't want to use a ton of full force here at all. Just kind of gently lift up. And that just gave me a little bit more room to remove the black chassis from the board so I could kind of separate it and actually get to the headphone line in port. And 
All right, next go ahead and uh, you'll want to get this black plastic piece off of the line in port. And so uh, just gently stick a, maybe a, a soft piece of plastic or screwdriver in there and you're just kind of gently working that off of the circuit board. So you'll notice there are four different places in which this 3.5 millimeter connector connects to the board. Four different soldering joints. And just barely gently touching it, you'll notice that those pads are lifting off pretty darn easy. And that uh, the problem with this board was that we were getting audio out of only one channel and the other channel was crackling. And so you can see here is because of a very loose connector. The soldering joints on here are just not very good here. And this is a very common problem with the Sling Studio, which is why I encourage people to leave feedback on the Sling Studio website by scrolling all the way down, clicking the feedback tab. I don't recommend you remove the line and jack this way, but rather uh, I'd recommend with a soldering iron heating up those pads and removing it that way. But mine was so loose I just went ahead and removed it. And notice we're going ahead and tinning up a soldering iron here. Again, there's lots of incredible tutorials online about how to solder properly, so I encourage you to watch those. But this got the job done for us. So right now we're wicking off um, all of the um, existing solder that was on these pads. And next we're adding a little bit of uh, solder paste or solder flux to these pads. Once that's done, we're adding a little bit of solder to the pads by getting a fine point on your soldering iron, touching it to the pad there, creating a nice bead. And then it's time to actually re-add the headphone jack. Go ahead and get it in place with some tweezers and then reheat those beads. All right, and you're just making sure that that's nice and snug on there, that it's not going anywhere, that each one of those four joints is properly soldered on there. We got it nice and secure, a lot more secure than it was earlier. close-up shot of what it will look like there. Alright, now we're using some isopropyl alcohol, 90% or higher, 
uh, in order to just kind of clean off uh, that board from any scorch marks or from uh, the flux as well. Next, go ahead and re-add these Wi-Fi cables. Uh, gently place them over their pads and then just using a very light pressure, you can kind of wiggle your fingers back and forth in order to seat that on there. It's not a very hard snap or anything like that, but you should feel it uh, sit down there properly. And just re-add them, make sure they're in the proper order. Take a picture of yours before um, disassembly. Sometimes it helps to use tweezers to get them in the exact right spot and then just kind of gently press them down uh, with your finger there. Again, we'll just kind of make sure that those are seated on there properly. Next, re-add the plastic piece onto the headphone jack. Helps to apply pressure on either side. Until that's back in the position that we found it. All right, next we're putting the uh, circuit board back on these pegs, and uh, you'll notice that I'm having a little trouble right here, and it helps to kind of pull back on the black piece. The power button sometimes gets in the way, but once you pull back that black piece, that sits right down on there. Once the board is in those clear pegs, we can re-add the antenna bracket. And all you do is just push down on there and those clips should expand and hold it firm. Next, it's time to re-add your plastic pieces. I'm not exactly sure what the best method is here, but here I'm trying to start from the bottom, kind of slide it in. You'll just have to play around with it, look at your clips, make sure you're not uh, busting off little plastic pieces. Just a lot of patience when it's, whenever working with plastic. It's easy to break stuff until you hear a satisfying click. like that. All right, now go ahead and re-add the bottom plate there. Re-add the four screws. And then next, reapply your pads. After you've done that, fire it up and see if she boots. There you have it, solid blue light. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Again, submit your feedback to Sling Studio. Thanks so much for watching. God bless and cheers.